Destiny's latest expansion, Rise of Iron, concluded with the Wrath of the Machine raid, a fun yet challenging experience for those Guardians brave enough to enter the deep walls of the Cosmodrome and confront the Siva Plague. Today, we're going to be going over an extensive guide on all of the boss mechanics, all of the locations of the secret chest, and how you guys can effectively get through the raid. So sit back and enjoy, and thank you guys for picking Destiny Follower. Before I proceed any farther with this video, I want to give a massive thank you to the following people for helping compile this footage and make this video possible. I want to give thanks to my friend Coda, my friend Cost Gaming, and of course DPJ. They all provided footage of various sections of the raid and in turn made this video possible. I will have all of them linked down below, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this raid guide. All right, like any raid, you need to figure out how to get inside. With Wrath of the Machine, that all goes down with an encounter against Fossick, the Archpriest. To get situated, you'll want to split up into three groups of two, two left, two middle, and two right at each of the metal spires. These will be your designated spots during the DPS phase, and if you aren't running the charge, this will be where you're hanging out. You'll want to designate two people in your group from any side to be runners. Everybody else will be on ad control. If you have any more than two runners, things get a little hectic and it becomes a scramble to get the required voltage and could lead to some unnecessary deaths. As a runner, you'll notice white beams of light shooting from the ground. Stepping on one gives you a buff called Voltage Rising and a 15 second timer. If that timer runs out, regardless of how many stacks you have, you will die. Luckily, this isn't a darkness zone so you can be revived quickly. Picking up another charge will reset the timer unless you're at max charge, which is four stacks. Once you have four stacks, you'll have a buff called Voltage Max. Take your charges to one of the metal spires and slam it in like you would in a game of Rift. People on ad control will need to look out for yellow health shanks spawning called Voltage Eaters. They are high priority targets and need to be killed as quickly as possible. They don't have a whole lot of health, so this isn't too hard. It's going to take you a total of five slams to fully charge a spire, and it is shared across all three, meaning if you charge one, it charges all of them, so you don't need to focus on getting around to each one, just slam them into whichever one's closest. After the fifth slam, return to your DPS position and start picking up the SIVA grenades that spawn. You'll want to throw these at the boss until his shield is depleted. Once his shield is depleted, throw the rest of the grenades you have as they do a large amount of damage, and then start unloading your main weapons into him. Keep doing damage until his shield recharges, and you're going to repeat this step over again. You're going to run around, grab the charges, slam it into the spires until the Siva grenades spawn, and repeat the process. If you get enough damage in on the second DPS phase, Vosik will retreat further into the raid, allowing you to access the raid itself. Climb to the top of the machine and claim yourself a loot chest and proceed on to the next area. After you've collected your loot from the chest, head through the tunnel and you're going to be in a jumping puzzle. These are relatively simple and pretty straightforward. All you need to do is jump from platform to platform until you reach the end and you're in the next area. So if you guys don't care about any hidden chest, just go straight, don't fall, and you'll be in the next part. If you guys would like to get a hidden chest that gives you a chance at an exotic, follow the background footage, you'll find a chest and have a chance at some nice loot. Once you've collected the loot, jump over the wall right next to it, and you guys will fall down and continue on into the next part of the raid. You've completed the jump puzzle and you're ready to fight Vasik once again. Like before, you'll want to split up into three groups of two, two left, two middle, and two right. 
Designate one person from each lane to be ad control and the other to be the bomb thrower. The thrower can help on ad control if the need arises. Shortly after the fight starts, in each lane a SIVA charge will drop from the ceiling and the thrower from each lane will need to pick this up. At the same time, all three need to be thrown at the boss. Make sure all three SIVA charges hit the boss for the most amount of shield damage. After the first set of charges have been thrown, one of the monitors behind Vazak will light up with a SIVA symbol. Shoot and destroy this immediately. Not destroying the monitor will instantly activate the SIVA density critical phase, which I'll go over in just a moment. Every 30 seconds or so, a charge will fall from the ceiling the same way it did in the first phase, so in between charges, everyone needs to focus on killing ads. Every so often, you'll get a yellow health captain spawn, which needs to be killed ASAP. It will take as little as three sets of charges to bring Vazek's shield down, assuming all three charges hit each time. Once his shield drops, everyone meet in the middle and begin DPSing the boss. Weapons light and tethers are a huge help here, and the DPS phase only lasts 20 seconds, so do as much damage as you possibly can. Towards the end of the phase, SIVA charges will fall from the sky, throw these at him for even more damage. After he regains his shield, Vazek begins the SIVA density critical phase. On the left and right wall, there are two rooms, making a total of four. At least one of these will be lit up with an orange light. Rush your team into the room and shoot the switch on the right side of the door if you're facing the boss. This will shut the door and it'll keep you safe from the SIVA, and you'll resume the battle again and repeat the process until the boss dies. After you do the second density phase, instead of drags and vandals, you'll get shanks, which are considerably easier to kill, but be careful as some are exploding shanks. Keep this process up and you will defeat Vasek, earning yourself some sweet loot, and you are on to the next part of the raid. The next area is another jumping puzzle. Like before, if you don't care about any hidden chests, just go forward, pray you don't fall, and you'll reach the next area of the raid. If you guys would like to find a hidden chest that gives you a chance at some exotics, follow the background gameplay and you'll find yourself another hidden chest.
You're up on top of the wall and ready for the notorious siege engine, also known as the Death Zamboni. When you first reach the top, fight your way to the other end, clearing ads along the way, and once you've reached the end, the siege engine will begin moving forward. Snipers and any other medium to long range weapons are welcome here. Your team has 50 seconds to destroy the Zamboni or you will wipe. Focus your fire on the two cannons on the front, one on the left and one on the right. Once you've destroyed both cannons, the core will be opened up and it is glowing a bright orange color. Shoot this until it's destroyed and once all three are done, run forward and jump onto the Zamboni. It's going to plow straight through the wall that was behind you and also you want to keep in mind that if you are too close to the front when it collides, you will die. So stay towards the back and you will be perfectly fine. Once you're through the wall, the team wants to run up to the other end where a fallen ship begins to drop enemies. Kill these as quick as you can and once they are dead, three parts to the Zamboni will spawn in. The warhead, the drive shaft, and the engine block. Three players need to pick these up and start carrying them towards the Zamboni. You can only carry a part for 10 seconds before it's dropped and you can't pick up any others for another 10 seconds. Whenever your part is dropped, help clear the ads as your team moves forward while another person carries your part. Communication is very key here. As soon as you drop a part, you need to notify your teammates that they need to pick it up and carry on. Help control ads and keep swapping out the parts until you reach the end. You're going to want to have one player scout the path ahead, destroying all of the slowing mines along the way. This player needs to be aware of the fallen ships as this can kill you very easily with the shot grenades. And once all the mines are destroyed and the parts are near the front, Mexis will spawn in. He is a fallen captain and he is going to be on top of the Zamboni. Everyone needs to drop their parts and rush to the top and help kill him. Rockets and supers are more than welcome to wipe him as quick as possible. Once he's defeated, the ramp at the front will drop, allowing you to bring the parts onto the Zamboni. The drive shaft goes in the front right as soon as you step on, the warhead goes in the middle of the Zamboni, and the engine block goes in the back left. Once all three parts are inserted, the Zamboni begins moving forward and heading straight towards a cliff. Jump to the rocks below, snag yourself another hidden chest, and carry on to the final parts of the raid. The next part is relatively easy and doesn't need much explanation. Once you've hit the rocks after the Zamboni, just make your way down through the hole until you've reached the server farm. Clear the ads that spawn down here and make your way to the perfection complex. You're going to go across a long bridge into a giant SIVA building, drop through the hole there and you are in the final boss arena. The final encounter is a two part boss with a break in between. There is a lot more going on in this part so communication is a key to succeeding. The first part of the encounter does not involve damaging the boss, instead you'll want to split your team into three groups of two once again, two left, two middle, and two right. The team in the middle doesn't have much cover so they have to deal with more damage from the boss and adds a bit more so keep that in mind. Designate one player from each side to be a charge holder and the other to be a cannon holder. Ads will start spawning on all sides shortly after the fight begins. Make quick work of the major vandal that spawns in. Roughly 20 seconds after ads start spawning, each lane will have either a shock, scorch, or null captain spawn. Lower light level characters need to be extremely careful as he will kill you quickly. As soon as the captains spawn, each side needs to kill them as quick as they can. Supers doing high damage help a ton, and swords are also a great alternative. 
Once the captain is dead, their cannon will drop and an elemental servitor will spawn from the same doorway on all three lanes. You need to kill the corresponding servitor with whatever cannon you have. If you have the Scorch Cannon, you need to kill the Solar Servitor. Same for the Arc and the Void Cannons. The Servitors do not attack, but instead follow a set path. And if they reach their destination, shown by some glowing red lights on the ground, this will trigger an event that causes a wipe, so kill them before they get there. To kill the Servitor, when shooting the cannon, hold the shoot button and it will charge up the shot. Release it and it will one hit kill the Servitor. Upon death, each Servitor will drop a SIVA charge. If you picked up a cannon, you cannot pick up a SIVA charge due to the debuff charge lockout. The players without cannons need to pick up these charges and throw them at the flashing SIVA diamond targets popping up around the boss. Charges do despawn, so be quick and be sure to communicate to your team which one you'll be hitting. In the first phase, there are a total of two targets. Once all the targets in the phase have been hit, the shank phase starts and a bunch of shanks will come from the ceiling. Use this opportunity to generate orbs and restore supers for your team. Once the shanks are done, round two begins and the same process starts over. The only difference being there are three targets to hit now instead of two. So wipe the captains, destroy the servitors, and throw your charges. Keep in mind, if you are too slow to destroy the targets, the boss will wipe you. Round 3 plays the same, but with a total of 7 targets to hit now, and multiple servitors spawning in. Once you've hit the 7 targets, this phase is now over, grab your loot, and prepare for the final encounter. Phase 2 begins once you shoot the boss. Axis slides down into a pair of metallic spider-like legs, and the real fight begins. For roughly a minute, Axis will teleport around shooting at you and spawning SIVA clouds. These do damage over time, so be sure to avoid them. Shanks also spawn in and can be a real problem if you actually get caught, so take care of them as quickly as possible. Play things safe until three players in your team receive a buff called Empowered. This is random and is very important for a later part of the fight. Once the buff goes out, like in Phase 1, three captains will spawn with cannons and servitors following after their death. Get the cannon, destroy the correct servitor, and have a player grab the SIVA charge. The only difference here is the charge is being thrown at the boss in the middle instead of the targets around him. It's going to take a total of three charges to bring a shield down, and then this is where the empowered players come in. All empowered players need to spread out to each lane, left, middle, and right. Axis will then teleport to one of four locations, the back left, the back right, front center, or the back of the map. As soon as he teleports, an empowered player closest needs to jump and dunk into the glowing red part on his back, which then allows you to DPS. You only have a window of roughly 5 seconds to dunk into his back, or you fail, he'll teleport back and trigger the SIVA density critical event. The first DPS lasts about 15 seconds. He will then teleport again to another one of the positions. Same rules apply here. Empowering player dunks into his back and DPS begins again. Empowerment will shift from player to player as you stun him, so communicate with your team on who has it. After you've dunked the third time and stunned the boss, he will remain there for 25 seconds, allowing you to do damage. After that time is up, he teleports back to the middle and begins the SIVA density critical event. Your team needs to run to one of the four pillars in the back and jump on it to survive. Having people on more than one pillar will use up all the ones being stood on and lessen the chances you have to damage the boss. This is also a good time to use some heavy ammo synth if you have them, so take advantage of the downtime. This process will repeat until you get the boss to around 5% health, and then he will teleport back to the middle and begin a self-destruct sequence. This is the final part of the fight in a very, very close DPS race. If you fail to finish him off here, he wipes the team and you are forced to start over. This is very similar to the final DPS check on Oryx, but much harder. Finish him off here, you will have completed the raid, earned yourself some awesome loot, and you can celebrate with your team on completing Wrath of the Machine. 
So that brings us to the end of our Wrath of the Machine normal mode guide. One hell of a raid. It's certainly a load of fun. And I'm going to be looking forward to playing it once again at reset. So if you guys found today's video helpful, hit the like button down below. All of us here at Follower appreciate it. If you guys are new around here and you want to see more Destiny content, hit the subscribe button as here at Follower where we post tons of Destiny news, guides, and entertainment. But I'm going to get out of here. I want to thank you guys for watching Destiny Follower.